Hey, Shalom, I'm Israel. First off, I would like to say, call her law, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, would like to say peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sisters that watch and sincerely believe, Shalom on me, you as well. Just back with another video. Uh, obviously, uh, last week, late last week, I believe Friday, uh, the reports came out that the second in command in Iran, uh, their, their, their top uh, military general or commander, uh, he was uh, assassinated. So you have that whole spirit of, of war being stirred up, chiefly World War III, which we know according to the prophecies is uh, World War III is the war to end all wars, you know, and that's going to uh, basically uh, lead into the destruction of Great Babylon by these other nations. Uh, blasting missiles over here uh to create thermonuclear destruction so even people that don't really know much about biblical prophecy or just current events in general just this whole situation uh regarding iran it has everybody on social media bugging the hell out whether it be scoffing and playing games and, and mocking uh uh the time that we in as far as world war three being stirred up or some people taking it actually serious and having concerns about the draft coming back and then just the ramifications of uh, how it's going to affect their precious America. So I just want to read some scriptures to go into that as well as other things that's happening in the earth to show that this Bible, it's a real living book. The prophecies are, 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 are living prophecies. We're seeing prophecies manifest day in and day out. And that what ultimately increases our faith. I'm going to just go here in Matthew 24 and 6. It says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. And that's what's happening right now. So it hasn't been a full scale war between uh, the U.S., Russia, Iran, China, these other nations that are going to be uh, key players in World War Three. So right now, it's just a lot of rumors of war. You have a lot of uh, indirect conflict being played out through the earth. Uh, you have a lot of what they call proxy wars, man. You know, but that shows that this Bible is a true living book, that these prophecies are coming to pass. And that's why these elites, they're trying to find a way to eliminate uh, the, 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 the men of the Lord's platform on YouTube and other uh, ways that are used to promote this word because they know that these prophecies are true and they come into pass. So we're hearing of wars and rumors of wars. That's all that's going on right now in the news, man. OK, what's uh, Iran's next move or uh, how how does China feel about uh, the assassination of the Iranian leader? So on and so forth. What are the uh, Chinese uh, uh, are going to do? How do they feel about what's going on? So the climate is getting hotter, but yet full scale war hasn't broke out. So right now it's just a lot of rumors of war. It says, see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet so the end is not yet even for brothers that we hasten the day of the return of the lord we hasten the day uh for the destruction of babylon but the end is not yet come and mainly because there's a lot of prophecy that has to come to pass before the the end of great babylon it says for nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And that's what we're seeing right now. Nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Even here in America, you have a divided kingdom. You have Democrat versus Republican. The, the Democrats, they went on. They went about trying to impeach Donald J. Trump. Which we're seeing through the spirit that that's not going to help a damn thing. He's probably going to rent win re-election by a landslide. And we know also the scripture says that a divided kingdom shall not stand. But there's nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And it's all different situations of, of, of famines going out throughout the planet Earth. Pestilences and pestilences. It means different uh, types of diseases. And it says in earthquakes in diverse places and if i can recall over the weekend in puerto rico it was just an earthquake i believe it was yesterday actually as of uh january 6 2020 it says all these are the beginning of sorrows 
So all of these different things, whether it be the, the wars and rumors of wars, kingdoms rising, rising against kingdom, earthquakes in diverse places, these are all just the beginning of sorrow. So there is more to come. A lot is happening as far as we know it, as far as prophecy is concerned for the men of faith to be increased in faith, to push harder for this word. Because we actually seeing the will of the Most High play out on the planet Earth. But these are just the beginning of sorrow. So it's going to get a lot worse, man. It's going to get uh, a lot worse. But I'm going to go to a different uh, scripture. I'm going to go to the book of 2nd Ezra real quick. And it's a beautiful time that we in, man. When we hear uh, all of these different wars and rumors of wars... We shouldn't be fearful like I just read in Matthew 24. It should increase your faith, especially if you're a believer, if the Lord put the spirit on you to be able to understand this word and furthermore preach. Man, we have a lot to be excited for. This is second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then. And said, measure thou the time diligently in itself and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I've told thee before. So you have to measure the time diligently. And the way that we measure the times is watching the prophecies, watching the, the signs that the most high showing from the heavens. That gives us an indication how close we are to the time, even though no one knows the exact time and hour that the most high is going to send his son, Yahweh Shai. But we have a, an indication that we're closer than before. It says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we're at the time in which the Most High, through his right hand, through his son, Yahweh Shah, he's going to visit this world. It says, therefore, when thou shalt be seen earthquakes and uproars in the people, or Salaki, and uproars of the people in the world, and that's what's happening right now, earthquakes in diverse places, like I just read in Matthew 24, and different uproars of the people in this world. It says, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things which spoke of those things from the days that were be before thee, even from the beginning. So it's a beautiful time. And the, and the scripture also says in uh, Habakkuk, the second chapter, that the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. So the visions, as it relates to everything's written in the Bible, the prophecies, they're speaking because we're in the latter days. We're in that time. We're in the time close to where the Most High, he's about to visit the world through his son, Yahweh Shai, you know, and the scriptures also speak of in Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, declaring the things before or the matter of fact. Let me read this verse again and then I'll read. What I was about to quote in Isaiah 42 This is back in 2nd Ezra 9 and 4 It says then shalt thou well understand That the most high spake of those things Which spake of those things From the days that were before thee Even from the beginning So the most high spake of those things Even from the beginning And people gotta understand That the most high He speaks through his prophets He's not himself gonna come Out of the throne of heaven to warn people and, and tell people what they need to do. The prophets are the mouthpiece of the Most High. So that's how the Most High is speaking. Through his prophets. Through his servants, the prophets. This is the scripture I, that I wanted to read to back up. 2nd Ezra 9 and 4. It says, Behold, the former things are come to pass. And new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So... New things the Most High has declared before they actually happen, he tells you of them. And the way that the Most High tells you of things that are going to happen before they happen is through his servants, the prophets. Because the word prophesy means to say before. And that's what's happening in the earth. That's why everybody's losing their damn mind. Because as the prophets speak, things is happening in the earth as we know it right now, man. That's why it's a beautiful time that we in. That's why brothers, even though we catch hell... In our perspective course of the faith We should be rejoicing Because we have this truth We have understanding of these prophecies This is uh, 2nd Ezra 15 and 1 It says behold Speak thou in the ears of my people 
the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. So the Lord, he puts the prophecies in the mouth of the prophets to speak to the people. And cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. So the words, the prophecies that we read out of, out of the Bible, out of the Holy Bible, they're faithful and true, meaning that they're all going to come to pass. Like it talks about in Isaiah 55 and 11, the word of the most high shall not return void. It says, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. And incredulity, that means disbelief. And it talks about in Romans 3, for what if some shall not believe, shall it make the faith of the most high without effect god forbid so just because you have scoffers mockers gainsayers people that don't believe that's not going to change the outcome of the most high's will it's not going to stop any of these prophecies from coming to pass and just that simple fact should bring so much joy to your spirit even though we're in the midst of babylon we're in in, in, in slavery under the damn devil at least we know the, the greater end of how everything's going to play out. Like uh, Asaph said in Psalm 73, when he went into the tabernacle of the Most High, then he understood the end. And the end is here. Even like I, I read in um, Matthew 24, we're at the beginning of, of sorrows, but we're closer to the end. Our salvation is nearer than when we first believed, like it says in uh, Romans, the 13th chapter. But I'm actually going to go back to 2 Ezra 9 because it was another verse. That I wanted to read Just talking about the end 2nd Ezra 9 Oh put, Pulled up the wrong thing So like it This is back in 2nd Ezra 9 And uh, 5 It says for like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and an end and the end is manifest. So I read in Matthew 24 that we're not at the end. We're just at the beginning of sorrows, but we're closer to the end. That's the point being made through the prophecies. We have an indication that we're closer than before to the end, even though we don't know the exact date and time and hour of the ending of the so-called ending. But we know it's close. It says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So just more hope for the most high's elect. The Lord is always going to give us different signs and tokens that we're closer to the end. And that's going to propel us to keep pushing this word, keep being diligent, keep praying without ceasing to the most high, hoping that these prophecies come to pass in due time sooner than later so it's a beautiful time that we in all types of wars and rumors of wars different so-called natural disasters in the earth different signs of the times that the most high is showing that these prophecies is real and that we're closer to the end so for the brothers that's pushing we just need to be in the spirit just to keep on pushing the scripture says uh he that endureth until the end the same shall be saved so it's not the end so we got a lot of work to do so with all being said, I just want to do a, a quick lesson. I was um, on a lunch break. So hopefully this made sense and edified. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, one peace and blessings to the elect.